how weird was it coming out of the dugout, first in the pitch hitting performance, with the reaction and the fans making so much noise, booing and everything else that was going on and the, and the craziness? Uh, what, what, what did it feel like, first of all, with the pitch hitting appearance? Uh, I'm glad I got in the game. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to win that game, and we scored five runs that inning and, uh, and then three runs the next. And then obviously we won last night, which was a big win for us. And uh, the guys have been playing hard here down the stretch. But I think the weirdest thing of, of the whole weekend was um, the chanting. <laughs> that was Champion strange. to get in the game, and then they want to react. You know, they want they want they want to they want they want to see you. It doesn't matter if they want to boo you or cheer you. They want to see you. They want to. See Say that they got a chance to see you again. They were they felt disappointed that they weren't going to get a chance to see you. Well, I, I wanted the same thing. I wanted to to play in front of them, and uh, I look. They were booing me uh, mercifully and and loud, and I've never heard them boo, boo me louder. But uh, it, it was exciting to be a part of it. Uh, we have a a long, rich history. Uh, if you look back at the last hundred years, but if you look back, just starting in two thousand and three. Uh, to about 2010. Uh, to me, that was probably the best brand of baseball that I've witnessed. When you think about uh, this, you know, you've, been, you've had a week to kind of think about the end coming here. You've been here a long time. You know, people might not realize you played a lot of the games as a Yankee, more games as a Yankee than anywhere else. I mean, Yan you've been here since 2004. You've been here a very long time. A lot of young folks, a lot of our young fans don't remember that I played shortstop. Right. And, and that's pretty fascinating. Young was talking about that today. He was talking <laughs> was about how good a shortstop you were and how really that you were the best defensive shortstop he'd ever seen and how good a shortstop he was. He was talking about that and, and how you made an impact on his career with your work ethic even late in that first season when he was there as a rookie. I recognized early on when Mike walked into a clubhouse in Texas that he was a special person. And you need a special character and... Uh, and make up to play, you know, people don't realize we play 200 games in about 232 days. And you need a certain amount of uh, discipline and uh, work ethic and passion for the game. And I, I think early on I recognized that he was going to be one of the special ones. Uh, a couple of things that, that came up. First of all, uh, this Jeter thing that got headlines. Uh, clarify, because I don't understand yeah. it. Did you talk to Jeter, not talk to Jeter? What happened with Jeter? Oh, yeah, no, no. He about... I mean, three days ago, he texted me a really nice text congratulating me and basically telling me to enjoy it. I texted him back probably okay. 30 minutes later, and uh, we're, we're in good standing. Okay, so we cleared that, that up. The other thing is there's already rumors out, MLB Network, a couple of the places saying teams are already contacting you. How are you going to handle that? I know you want to get through tonight, but how are you going to handle that? It sounds like there's going to be teams. There's already rumors. There's been two teams. Uh, first of all, have teams contacted you? Uh, no. And, uh, you know, Mike, after this is over, I, I've talked about all week about uh, Friday being the horizon of the week and kind of just focusing and zeroing in and, uh, you know, trying to play and play well and, and try to help us win a game today. And we have a good, a very good pitcher on the mound, Chris Archer, who's given me a hard time in the past. And, uh, you know, after this is over, I'm going to go back home to Miami. I'm going to take my mother and my daughters home, and I'm probably going to take a nap for about a week. <laughs> uh, uh, would you – now, a lot of guys retire and unretire in every sport. We see boxers. We've seen a million guys do it. Uh, can you say definitively this is it, or is there a chance that you would play after tonight, or is it something that you don't even want to think about yet? First of all, I, I, I've never liked the word retirement, especially at 41. I mean, I, I'm ancient in baseball, but I'm a pretty young guy in the real world, and – the word retirement just makes me feel old. Um, you know, Mike, my, my intention here was to uh, finish this season strong. Uh, I've proven that with great rest comes good results for me. Uh, after serving the suspension, came back last year and played well and, and drove the ball. And I kind of had that envision for, for next year. Um, obviously, that wasn't in the cards. So once Howe and I sat down on Wednesday, I started to start really thinking about this uh, very quickly. And, uh, and here we are today. So uh, Thank you. is the idea that you'll deal with things as they approach themselves later on? Or, I mean, never say never? Or how, how are you going to deal with it? Not think about it right now and then wait and see? Because it sounds like other teams are getting ready to, to contact you. I, look, I mean, first of all, wearing this uniform, for uh, people don't realize, for 13 that's seasons. That's a long time. That, yeah. That's a long time. And, and for me, uh, I take an enormous amount of pride uh, to play 22 years for three teams. Um, and the major part of that is, is, is a, as a Yankee. And that's, I treasure that. And for me, the, the pinstripes uh, at the moment is enough. Um, I know you said uh, with Susan this week that, you know, I made some mistakes. I didn't, I didn't handle things right. I'm not going to sit here and recast everything. What it, let's take the, the very good and the very bad. If, 
if I say what's the most thing you're proudest of in your in, in all the years of this brilliant career, what are you most proud of in this career? Well, when you look at it, that whole 20 plus years, all the accomplishments, what what is it that you're most proud of in this uh, this career? I mean, I think just playing so long. I mean, the fact that I look back and sit and think about. 22 years and over so many games I think that's probably the the thing I'm most proud of I mean because it's it's something that's pretty rare and I, I got to be honest with you Mike if if you if I had to do it again uh, I don't know if I can play 22 years again it, it's 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 a tall mountain and uh, obviously that comes with you know the great love for the game and and, and work ethic and and working at it but um you know, I also have some incredible relationships that I've built. I mean, if I think about someone who's a father figure to me, like Lou Pinella, uh, he was a great teacher of mine. And uh, I've often said um, that I wish I had an extra five years under his tutelage because uh, I think it would have done me a lot of good. It, is there one uh, category? Is there one? Is it the MVPs? Is it the home runs? Is it the, you know, enormous overall numbers i mean is there one thing you point to and say this 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 means a lot to me i mean is there one thing that you can look at and say this this means a lot to me i i think that's and the easiest question you're going to ask me out there i think obviously 2009 to be able to do that here in new york in front of the greatest fans in the world and bring the championship back where it belongs here in new york and then the last two years and my relationships with the commissioner's office and hal steinbrenner and the yankee organization overall the last two years is probably what I'm most proud of because it was probably my hardest challenge ever uh, to be able to kind of um, dig out of the hole that I created for myself. When we go back over the last couple of years, we're talking with A-Rod, of course, on this, the day he leaves. Uh, when we do that uh, and we look back and you talked about, I fall down, but I get up. Um, when you came back after the suspension, what, what was it that you were wanted to accomplish what what is it that you felt you needed to accomplish number one i wanted to come back and uh and be productive on the field uh i felt like the yankees hadn't been to the postseason in several years uh i felt we belong in the playoffs every year um that's what our fans expect and i wanted to be a part of that and uh that was one and then number two i i realized while i was gone um the impact of my act, of my actions and how they impact other people, and I wanted to make sure that I I left the game with my head high and and proud of uh, not just the numbers but my behavior. Talking with A Rod, I got some more questions for A Rod, but first <laughs> Robinson Cano's on the line. Robinson, welcome. How are you? Good, good. How you doing? Dime mi hermano. Hey, Robbie. So, uh, Robinson, uh, nice of you to call in today uh, on A-Rod's last day. What would you like to add to the program? What do you want to tell the fans? Well, I'll tell the fans that I play one of the best players that I ever played the game, the guy that works really hard, the guy that um, that, that really teach me and took me under his wing. And, uh, you know, I remember when I first came on, I didn't like to – Lift way after the game, and he was like, Robbie, let's go. I was like, ah. But then I realized, and he told me one day, you know what, you should be one of the best in this game. But you had to prepare yourself to play 180 games, 162, and then charge that day. And uh, also, never had a 100 RBIs before. And then he took me to the backfield. In spring training, I remember that with Kevin Long. He was like, let's go and work. Then we went back there, work situation. We managed to, we managed to go to the position, and then, you know, I mean, those, those are the kind of things that, um, you know, you, you say that uh, if it wasn't for him, it's going to maybe took me longer or I would never done it before. And then, I mean, you know, people don't realize how a great human being he is. I mean, being with him every day in the same clubhouse and be able that, um, you know, talk to him, see how hard he works. I mean, that's something that um, I always look up to him and uh, say, and I want to say here. You know, thank you again for everything you done for you done for me. Hey, Rod, what did you see in a young uh, Cano? I mean, his his talent just uh, jumps off the page, and obviously, an infectious smile. Someone who uh, I believe is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I knew he had it in him. I mean, much like Michael Young, when someone special walks in your clubhouse, you realize not only that he's a championship player, but he has an opportunity to be a historic player. And the ability to play both sides of the ball and be an eight defender uh, and a seven hitter and uh, a guy that can hit 300, hit in the middle of the lineup, 
uh, a guy that's in incredibly durable. Uh, you know, one of the things people don't realize about Robbie is how strong and how big he is. And he's probably, along with Ken Griffey Jr., probably the most flexible guy that I've played with. And that creates a great amount of um, range of motion in his swing, and that's why he's able to hit the ball all over the park. But I remember, uh, <laughs> Robbie, I don't know if you remember, we were, I think it was before game six in 2009, I called you or I texted you around 1 o'clock, and uh, we came in late from Philly, and I said, hey, early work with Mick Keller at 2.30. And you text back yeah, and said, yeah, are yeah. you crazy? <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, Robbie, you st do you still do all the work that you used to do here, or do you need someone to push you out there or without having A-Rod out there? Do you still get up and do all the work? No, no man, I still do it. And, and, you know, every every time I see him, you know, you know, the, the, this game is, like he says, I mean, you have to have the love and the passion for this game and see him, you know, the way he's still prepared, the way he looks, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of guys... You know, they, they know they put a good number. They say, okay, I'm good. I want to go home. But he's the guy that he loves this game. He always ready, and he always repairs himself. And, uh, I mean, I always remember that. And then I just pass along to young kids here in Seattle. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of people ask me, oh, how's era? I mean, you don't, you don't want to say, I don't, you don't want to know. I mean, if you be around that guy, you will know how, how great is baseball. Because when you work hard, all you can see is good results. So I went Robinson Cano. Well, listen, thanks for calling in today, Robbie. Very nice of you. Thanks. Uh, I know it means a lot to A-Rod, so thanks very much. All right. Thank you. You're welcome anytime. Vale, ya tu sabes, hermano. Ya tu sabes, hermano. Un abrazo. You know, abrazo, that's Robinson Cano, of course. And that's been talked about a lot with you is the impact you had on a lot of these young guys. Uh, Milky, uh, Cano. How about this, you know, the, this idea of you being this guy who just not only likes to work with young players, just likes the idea of the, the nuts and bolts of baseball, just the, all the hard work on the fields, all the other stuff, uh, all the stuff that fans don't see about the game. I, I think that's what I'm going to miss the most, Mike, is, is, you know, everyone talks about 7 to 10, and, of course, the game is, is amazing, but all the work and preparation that goes into it, that's probably what I'm going to miss the most, is going back in the backfields in George Steinbrenner and taking a couple of youngsters and, and talk, talk about the game, right? Because our scouting department... Uh, we is our is their job to you know draft great players and as veterans and and, and mentors is our job to help them mature and uh, you know Hal Steinbrenner wants you know he wants a great ROI on all his investments and uh, is our job as leaders up here to not only teach him how to play uh, Major League Baseball, but winning Yankee baseball. And there's an enormous difference between the two. You know, Nate Silver, when he's not putting out these uh, charts on the election, put out a chart on your career as a Yankee rate uh, on a return on investment. And he's a stat geek if people don't know what he does. He does stats on Thing, and said the Yankees made a very good investment. They said he said they made a hundred and I think a hundred and nine million dollars profit on you as a as a business, which is not a bad deal on on, on your salary. So you know you might ask for a raise. <laughs> you know it sounds like because he, he put it at a hundred and nine million dollars over the length of your contract, which is not bad. Well, if you want to be my agent, Mike, in my next profession, uh, we can start. You got talks. good enough agents. You don't need me. You've made plenty of money. We're talking with Alex. I thought that was interesting. It was very interesting. You can see it at that five thirty eight. If you want to look it up. Uh, Nate Silver does all these sports and political computations and statistics, but it was an interesting one he did on A-Rod this week. And obviously, coming up to the last game this week, you wanted to play the field tonight. It, does it bother you that? I mean, does it hurt not to be in the field? Joe said maybe. He didn't say for sure no. Uh, were you capable of playing in the field? I mean, is it something you thought you could do? Or is it something that was iffy? What was your thoughts about wanting to play the field tonight? Well, I think if the ball is hit right at me, I, <laughs> you can still catch, I, I can it. catch it and right. throw it. Um, you know, I went into Joe's office and uh, he told me the plan in Boston. And uh, I said, well, I'm already in here. Why not just throw a Hail Mary out there and see if uh, he would let me play third base uh, for my last game? I think is something that would have been cool to share with our fans. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm in the lineup today and I'm, I'm thrilled about that. What do you say to these uh, fans over 12 years? You know, you've had a lot of highs. You've had some lows. You've had plenty of highs. You've had a lot of uh, moments here with this team. What do you say to these fans who not only will fill the, the building, but the ones who are watching and listening? Well, first of all, I mean, that's what today is all about for me, is uh, to get an opportunity to, to thank them uh, through the ups and downs. Uh, like I said in my presser on uh, Sunday, you know, I'm a guy that's going to be remembered 
for uh, obviously the love of the game, but more importantly for some of my great mistakes and uh, a guy that tripped and fell a lot and kept getting up. And I think uh, that that's that's an important lesson for me. And uh, uh, just tonight is going to be uh, a very emotional night for me, Mike. But to me, I feel like I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world to be able to wear these pinstripes since, since 2004 in the greatest city in the world, in the grandest stage. Um, things we take for granted, uh, I, I haven't. You know, uh, you're a, a smart baseball guy. You, you love baseball. You like the history of baseball. You're a part of the history of baseball. You're also part of an era where there's a lot of players who are in the same boat you were, where they had issues with, with performance-enhancing drugs, a lot of them, and they're on the outside looking in with the Hall of Fame, but they have Hall of Fame accomplishments. You're right at the top. You have, hall, you have uh, accomplishments at the level of Aaron, Ruth, Bonds is in the same boat, Manny Ramirez, we can go down the line. Uh, how do you, can you place all these contemporaries of yours and yourself in history for the fans? Can you in some way tell them what you think about what was performed and what happened during this era? I certainly can, Mike. I mean, the one thing is, is I, I can just speak about myself and, and some of the great mistakes that I've made. And, uh, you know, I think those have been well documented. Uh, Would you have been the same player, do you think, if you had not done anything that whatever you did do? That, would you have been the same player in your mind? I, 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 that's, that's, you know. That's the question that, I get asked the most, and yeah, I don't know how to answer yeah, it. So that, that, I, you're the only one who question. can answer it, I think, or I can't answer it. Maybe you can't answer it. I don't know if you can. The, I don't know how to answer it. I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I just know that, you know, the most frustrating part, I did an interview last week, and. Uh, you know, arguably my, my best two years came as a 19-year-old, you know, skinny shortstop and, and as a 40-year-old uh, man last year. And uh, that kind of arc makes it even more frustrating, my, uh, my stupid decisions. Um, when you think about this place as a stage, you've been at the top here. You've been performing almost like a high wire act for 12 years. I mean, you're always in the, you're always in the news. You're always in the, you live that life every day. It's got to be hard to climb off that stage. I mean, for even for, for, for a day, you've lived on everything. Every move you've made has been chronicled every day. People care about everything you do. Now you're going into a different phase of your life. Have you thought about that at all? I, I have. I have, and I have for quite some time. And, and Will you miss it? Will you miss the stage? I, I will miss it. I will miss it. Um, but I also need a nap. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long run and, and a great run. It's been exciting. Uh, I'm one of the luckiest human beings to be able to play this game, to wear this uniform. Uh, everywhere I go, uh, all over the place, uh, fans are, are incredibly respectful. They're nice. Uh, you know, they want pictures and autographs. Uh, we, we, we really are um, incredibly lucky. There's about 750 of us, and it's a small fraternity. And for all the players that are out there listening, I mean, just really enjoy every moment because this is truly a gift. We're talking with Alex Rodriguez as we get ready tonight for his last game here at the stadium. It's got to be, for someone as competitive as you, and, and anyone who's as good as you are as competitive, to leave with 696, I don't know if I could do it. I, I, I don't think I could do it. I mean, I know <laughs> that, that, you know, in the, my life I've lived and what, what are my accomplishments and goals, I don't know if I could walk away from that. I don't think I could. That's not easy to do. It must be hard. I mean, it, it, it's got to be tough. You're four home runs from 700 home runs. It's got to be tough. There's no question, Mike. It is difficult, and I never thought about that. If you ask me... You know, 10 days ago, and I, that wasn't an option. Of course, I thought that um, I would hit 700 and go on to do, uh, you know, better things for, for, for our franchise. But, again, that wasn't in the cards. Um, it's frustrating. It's disappointing that I didn't get that opportunity. But at the end of the day, it's, it's time for um, the next generation to, to start playing good baseball. What do you want to do? You have the whole world. First of all, you're young. You've done well with your finances. You have the whole world open to you. you have gr you've already done well in broadcasting. You have businesses. You have great things that are available to you. What is it you'd like to do with your life the rest of I mean, what What's important to you now? What? Other than your family, which I understand, your kids, I understand that part. But what do you want to... What do you? What would you like to do with the? You have a lot of life left. What do you want to do with it? Well, I think that's the number one thing. Uh, is you know, Cynthia's going to be here tonight with the girls, and uh, and my mother's getting older. Um, I want to go home and and take time with my family. 
Um, my girls are the most important things in my life. And I talked about maybe volunteering and the basketball coach at Ransom and their school in Miami. That would be amazing. I, I also want to spend time with the Boys and Girls Club and continue to give back. Uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. And at some point, I'd like to be a voice for the Hispanic community. And um, there's tremendous opportunity out there for our community to kind of take the next step in the, in the business world. You're a 16-year-old kid, grew up without a father, right? I know that. I know it very well because I grew up without a father, okay, since I was seven years old. So I know, I know what that's about. Uh, you grew up poor, I grew up poor. So I understand that part of it. But your dreams, you had great athletic talent. How old were you when you first realized you had really special athletic talent? I would say I thought the big leagues was a real opportunity probably my junior year in high school. Now, you could have played football, too, because you were that good. Bobby Bowden said you were the best high school quarterback you ever saw. So you had that on top of it, too. Why baseball first? What moved you to baseball versus, say, football? You well, used to wear Dan Marino. You had 13 for Dan Marino. What, why not football? A lot of people don't realize I stopped playing baseball when I was 12. And uh, my mother called. You know, my mother had two jobs. And she called in one day and said, I need to see you. And it was a 7 o'clock meeting with my mother. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. She's uh, a waitress at night. So you're missing work. She must be very important. And basically she, you know, I wanted to be the next Magic Johnson and Matt and Larry Bird. Of course, those rivalries were incredible. Celtics against Lakers, you remember those. And uh, she brought out the roster of the NBA, and she said, count how many Dominican players are in this roster. And I spent 20 minutes on this thing going up and down, and there was none. And then she brought out an MLB roster. And, you know, after I got past, like, uh, 50 or 60 Dominican players, I said, okay, Mom, I'll give baseball a second chance. And I started playing baseball again. And... You knew you were good. By 16, you knew you had a chance to be special. Once, or you knew you had a chance to be a major leaguer. Once I started playing in the junior, junior Olympic teams, where where the collection of the best high school talent uh, representing the United States, and my roommate were A.J. Hinch and uh, Tori Hunter, um, I realized playing with all these great players that I had a chance to actually uh, make it to the major leagues. And then my goal was, man, if I can spend one, one day in the major leagues, I'll be the happiest guy in the world. You know, um, I'm talking with A-Rod as he gets ready to go down. He's got a press conference today. you got a thing on the field. You got How many people do you have here today? You have fans here. You have friends here. You have family here. you got a whole bunch of people here. People today, right? are flying in from all over, the, uh, I, not the country, from Dominican, from California, obviously a bunch of people from Miami, uh, I'm probably going to have over 100 people in the Will building. You be so if in the they box cheer, tonight? those are all my people. That yeah, They'll cheer. <laughs> they'll be more than that cheering. And, you know, you're good about that. You know, you don't mind if, they, you know, everyone says, you know, it, it's amazing that it's part of who you are, that people even today will debate whether the whole place will cheer for you or not. But, you know, you've gotten used to handling that, you know, and you really have. You've, you've handled that well. But it's not easy always to handle that. You know, you don't want to be booed in your own building. No one wants that. That's uh, the worst feeling in the world. No, no one wants to get booed in the building. Um, but, you know, what's great about New York fans is they bring, they bring out the best in you, and they're going to hold you accountable. And from 2004 to today, that's what I really enjoy most about the fans. They push you like no other. You know, uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. Now, you and I always kidded about going out the same year. You're leaving before me. So, I don't know. This, maybe, I'll, maybe this will be my last <laughs> show, too, because you know, we always kidded about going out the same month together. <laughs> so, you're leaving a year early on me. So, uh, we know that. I'd like to be your agent. I mean, let me tell you something. Hey, don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> Neither of us needs an agent, thank God. But in 30 years, the most famous interview I'll have ever done was you storming into my studio on and out. And people don't realize you just came, okay? You gave me 10 minutes. I'm coming over. And I still still hear about this every day. People say, how can you talk to A-Rod? He didn't tell you the truth. You know, that interview will be played forever, you and I in that interview. You know, that interview is like part, when, when they show my last show ever, it's going to be part of that interview. It's going to be you. You know, They're going to show my most famous moment was you and me in that interview when you were so mad that day. Oh, my. You know, that? You know what? I look back at that interview, and it's so embarrassing. I just, I just cringe every time I see that, and I quickly turn off the channel. Uh, that, that was, uh, that was dark place for me. People say, hey, Rod owes you an apartment. I said, he, he was talking to you. I'm the conduit. He doesn't owe me. Hey, Rod and I are fine, okay? You know, people, they take it so personal. They really, they, 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 you're part of their team. 
you're part of it. You come into their house every day. They want to love you. You you do great things for their team, and they get personally affronted. You know, that's uh, they take it as a, as a personal affront. It's amazing how – can you see now how emotional they are? It's really yeah. amazing. You, haven't you found that out over the last couple of years, just how emotional the people take this? I mean, so emotional. I was driving in today, Mike, and there's, you know, several fans that always wait for me in, in a particular corner. They know my route. One is at the bridge. The other one's at – um, the light, and they were both crying like little babies, and you know it's it's very emotional, and uh, that's that's the greatest part of my career, being able to dress up in pinstripes and play in this stage, grandest stage in the world for the greatest franchise in the world. And uh, it's remarkable and it's humbling. That kid who was in Miami dreaming about playing in the major leagues from a poor family with no father is sitting here tonight at Yankee Stadium in front of a sellout crowd having had 2,000 hits, uh, 2,000 RBIs, 2,000 runs scored, only three players in history who've done that, 696 home runs, MVPs, a million records. Can you get your hands around, forget the steroids for a minute, can you get your hands around the career you've had here for, for tw over 20 years and what you've accomplished on the baseball field? As you look at your last game, I mean, it, it is remarkable. The, I mean, think about the career you've had here and what you've accomplished. Not really, Michael. I, I, you know, that's kind of who I am. Is my DNA is to think about what's today's mission, and today's mission is Chris Archer's on the mound, and we need a win. We're in a pennant race. Uh, we feel good about our young guys coming up, and I don't take too much time to look back. Uh, I'm sure at some point when I'm back home in Miami, I'll get a chance to reflect. Uh, but, but what I'm most thankful about is, you know, the great people that I've played with and the relationships that I've built uh, over time. When, when you say the things you say about Michael Young or Robinson Cano, that's what I'm going to take away. And also, you came back and mended a lot of fences. You went on Fox and had, did very well. You get along now with baseball. The commissioner likes you. You know, I don't think he likes me very much. He likes you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the bottom line is you've mended a lot of those fences in two years. You came back and had a great year last year. That's got to be really meaningful what you've been able to bridge in the last two years. I'm sure that, you, know, you, you have done a really good job. of. You've taken the high road. If somebody gave you a hard time, you took it. You didn't fight back. You, you've taken every thing and 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 i mean even your worst critic would think that you've handled things very well in the last two years you know for a long time uh i was so focused on performance and just going out and, and doing well and helping the team win and uh being ultra focused just on one thing very singular and i think over the last few years uh while i was serving my suspension i, I got a chance to press the pause button and rethink things and uh it's a little bit of rewiring of the brain and really have a full understanding of how important the commissioner is and guys like Tony Petiti in the, in the commissioner's office and Hal Steinbrenner and, and, our, and our management here and the relationship with my manager, Joe Girardi. And those things are equally as important as hitting the ball over the fence. And, and that's something that I'm going to take away. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful that I learned that on the way out. You know, Babe Ruth, you know, everyone talks about those three home runs he hit, you know, <laughs> when he couldn't hit anymore and he was washed up, you know, they, that's part of the lore. The Bambino hitting those three home runs for the Boston Braves, okay? Hitting the ball out of Pittsburgh. Who knows if he really did or not? But they say he hit the ball out of Pittsburgh. Nobody saw it. But the bottom line is, you know, that's part of the lore of baseball. Do you have one of those nights in store for us this evening? Or oh, what? boy, I don't know. I'm terrible at predictions. <laughs> hey, listen, I put the ball in play three times last night. That was a good night for me. And the fact that I was able to drive in a run with a little... A little swinging bunt. I, I was happy about that. You know, um, that, yeah, you know what? It, 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 that was a big run. Actually, it was a very big run in the game. You know that? It really was. That was a tough at bat. You had to be just... thinking Grand Slam, though, right? Yeah, and your I... mind, does, does Grand Slam come in? Can you focus? So, do you focus so much on Grand Slam? It comes into everybody else's mind. They put up a graphic. 25 Grand Slam is yeah. most of all time. Are you thinking, man, if I could put one in the, uh, over that monster right now, this place is going to go nuts. I, 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 got, I can't lie to you. I was, I was definitely thinking about that. But, but then the situation on a 3-2 to two game in the eighth inning, you also say, I need to get at least one run in here to give a little cushion. You know, the for night before, open. you almost got it. Mm -hmm. you, you ju that's like a fraction of an inch. You just missed on that outside. You just mm -hmm. missed the three. That was an inch away from being a 3-1 homer. Uh, I felt good off the bat. I just popped it up a little bit too much. But I've had a lot of fun here playing the last uh, two days, and I'm glad that we're 2-0, and and hopefully we can win another one today. Are you, are you really at peace? I mean, are you leaving and saying the right things, or are you really at peace about leaving now? Michael, I don't think that's something you can fake. I, I, I am at peace uh, looking back at all the years that I've played, the relationships, um, 
you know, we're going to have a full house here tonight. It's going to be so exciting. And again, I, I want to just make sure that I think I wish there was a way that I can shake each fan and thank them for for the memories they've given me. And uh, uh, they've given me more than any man deserves. And for that, I'm very thankful. Well, listen, you, you, you're, you're welcome to come in the studio anytime. <laughs> OK, you can come on and analyze the playoffs. You can come on and talk about Miami football, although they're not any good anymore. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can get them back to where they used to be. But you can come on, talk about any sport you want to come back and analyze any time. As long as I'm sitting here, which is 15 more months, <laughs> you know, now that you're leaving me high and dry, you can come back uh, any time you want. If we can talk hurricane football, I'd love to come to the studio and yeah, do some Yeah, I, I don't want to kill the Raiders, okay? I mean, let's, let's be honest. Okay? I don't think you're going to be as big a draw anymore. I'm sorry. Know. You know, that, that, those days are over. You know, a couple minutes, you know. I'm th done. That's it. You're not a ratings magnet anymore. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, okay? Mike. Thanks. Appreciate it. Alex Rodriguez back after this.